Okay. I will start with our statement. Due to the COVID-19 emergency, the Planning Commission will conduct its essential business by electronic means rather than being required to gather in a quorum of the members physically present in the same location because it is necessary to protect the health, safety, and welfare of Tennesseans. This meeting is in compliance with Governor, Governor's Executive Order Number 65 that will remain into effect until 11.59 p.m. on December 27th, 2020. With that, I'm going to call us to order, and I said it has been determined that this meeting is electronically uh, is necessary to protect the public health, safety, and welfare in light of the coronavirus. A recording of this meeting will be made available to the public online. I will determine a quorum. Um, I will say your name. Let me know that you're present. Um, Shelly Smith. Present. Paul Schwerer. Here. All right. Uh, Mayor Nois. Okay, he's waving, so I'll take that as a yes. Um, Miss Blackwell. Here. Mr. Comer. Yes. And Mr. Crabtree. Here. All right. I determined that all members are present. So we have a quorum. If we would, uh, let's rise and we will um, do the national anthem. Um, Pledge of Allegiance. I'm sorry. Nobody's going to sing today. And I was going to ask you to start us out, Rupa. So I will ask you to start us out just with the Pledge of Allegiance instead of the national anthem. I was like, not singing. <laughs> okay, please do. <laughs> oh, wait. I pledge allegiance to the flag. Of the United States of America, to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, and a God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Ah. All right. Glad to get everybody started out on the light note. Um, so, um, we will, we have two sets of minutes to um, go over. One of them is our previous Planning Commission meeting, then also our um, Board of Zoning and Appeals. So let's first, if you would review the minutes of our previous uh, Planning Commission meeting, and when everybody is ready, I'll entertain a motion. I'll move to approve. All right. Second. Second. All right. So we have Ms. Blackwell with the motion, and I heard uh, Mr. Crabtree with the second. All right, we get to do the fun time. I get to go through and ask everybody. We'll do a roll call vote. So um, as you appear on my screen, I will ask. Um, Mr. Crabtree. Yes. All right. Mayor Nois. Here. Yes. All right. Um, Ms. Blackwell. Yes. Ms. Smith. Yes. Mr. Comer. Yes. And Mr. Schwer. Yes. All right. And I'm a yes as well. All right. The minutes have been approved. All right. Next in front of us would be the minutes from our most recent um, Board of Zoning Appeals. It was held on October 19th, 2020. Once y'all review those, if you would let me know, I will entertain a motion. It's approved. All right. I'll second it. All right, I have Ms. Blackwell with the motion for approval of the minutes and Mr. Schwer with the second. All right, and we will go with the roll call vote. Paul, you're first up on my screen. You're the last one to talk. So how do you vote? Yeah, approved, yes. <laughs> Mr. Crabtree? Yes. All right. Um, Ms. Blackwell? Yes. Ms. Smith? Yes. Mr. Comer? Yes. And Mayor Nois. Yes. All right. And I am a yes as well. So let's um, approve those minutes as well. So um, any reports from staff or officers? Ms. Moody? Uh, I would like to share with the Planning Commission that we, the city has hired a new senior planner that will start on Monday, November 30th. Uh, we're very excited. Her name is Mary Samaniego. And she'll be moving to Tullahoma uh, from the city of Tampa, Florida, where she's most recently been there, I believe, seven years. 
um, and has an extensive background, maybe about 25 years total of local government planning experience in a variety of different communities uh, in different states. And we look forward to her bringing her knowledge and experience to the position and, and cannot wait for you to meet her. That is great news to hear. I know you're excited as well. <laughs> so, all right. Um, if that being said, we do not have any old business. So we are going to move to news business. Um, first on our agenda is the East Deckard Street right-of-way surplus request. Um, Ms. Moody, is there anything that you'd like to let us know? Uh, I have been working with this applicant for the last couple of months. This property is addressed as 320 South Polk Street. It's uh, a non-conforming lot, a legal non-conforming lot though. It is, it's 10,000 square feet, 50 feet by 200 feet. And he's looking to add an additional 25 feet of width to the property and 200 feet long. Um, and it'll go into the East Deckard Street right of way. Um, my understanding from talking with the applicant is that originally he was hoping to gain enough additional property. Uh, this It is zoned R2, and so he was looking to gain enough additional property to, to either convert the single family home to a duplex or to possibly subdivide the property and have uh, another home brought in on the back half of the property. Now, this does not accomplish either of those things. There is not enough right of way to give to create uh, a 20,000 square foot lot. But uh, now he's looking at this additional property as helping him maybe to build a two car garage on the property. Okay. All right. Thank you very much. Um, this is a public hearing. Let me go through the rules of public hearing. Um, I will open up the public hearing. You are given two minutes. Please state your name and your address. Um, if you are multiple people wanting to speak, or that we have multiple people wanting to speak, but donate their time, I would ask that you would immediately say who you're, who you're donating your time to when I open the public hearing. With that, I'm going to open this up for the public hearing. Anybody like to speak about the, speak about the East Deckard Street Surplus request? All right, there's none, so I will close the public hearing, and I would entertain a motion to open for discussion. Move to approve. All right. Second. All right, we have a motion from um, Ms. Blackwell and a second from um, Mr. Crabtree. All right, any discussion, any questions, discussion about this? Mr. Chairman, it's Roy Norris. I've taken a look at this property, and uh, as Ms. Moody has indicated, selling this right away really doesn't give the owner the option to do anything that he's really wanted to do. Uh, secondly, it would be really just spot selling. If we were going to make a comprehensive plan to sell that right away, I'd like to see us do it more of the length of the <coughs> East Deckard Street, not just for one block at a time. So I would uh, suggest that this is not an appropriate uh, sale of property. Okay. And this, um, we actually do not vote on the sale of this. We give either a favorable or unfavorable recommendation to the Board of Mayor and Aldermen. So Correct. just to let y'all, I'm sorry if I didn't say that to begin with. All right. Is there any other comments, questions? If not, I will call the question and we will vote. We are voting on if this is a favorable, sending a favorable, right now it's, we are just gonna send a favorable motion to the Board of Mayor Alderman. So, um, Mayor Nois. No. Mm -hmm. Ms. Blackwell. Yes. Ms. Smith. Yes. <laughs> Mr. Crabtree? Yes. All right. Mr. Schwer? 
Yes. All right. Um, Mr. Comer? Yes. All right. And I will vote yes as well. That was six to one for a favorable um, recommendation to be sent to the Board of Mayor Aldermans. All right. Moving to our next one. It is the, um, this will be subdivision plats. This is going to be Barnes, Fly, Blue Creek, Blue Creek Road, minor subdivision plat. Um, these will also all be public hearings, but first I'll ask Ms. Moody, do you have anything you need to add to this? I'll just introduce the item. It is uh, located at uh, 2232 Blue Creek Road in our Franklin County urban growth boundary. Uh, the applicant has indicated to create two lots for residential development from an existing 10 acre parent track. And it's near the intersection with Turkey Creek Drive. Uh, and currently the land is agricultural undeveloped property. And each of the proposed lots would be about 0.81 acres or just over 35,000 square feet. Mm -hmm. And this is in our urban growth boundary, correct? Mm -hmm. Yes. All right. All right. Uh, once again, I will open this up to public hearing. Um, two minutes, state your name um, and your address. And if you're going to donate your time, please speak up in the beginning so we can get it all at once. Um, I'm opening a public hearing. Would anybody like to speak about um, the Blue Creek Road minor subdivision for Barnes and Fly? I will close the public hearing. I will entertain a motion. Move to approve. Second. All right. That was Mr. Crabtree with the motion, and I do believe Ms. Blackwell with the second. All right. We have the motion to approve. Um, discussion amongst the board. Any questions? Any thing? Mr. Chairman, uh, I'm very familiar with this property. It's out in the area where I live on the south west side of town everything around it is all uh residential housing and things like that and adding more residential housing out there won't hurt a thing in fact it'll it'll improve that area out there all right thank you um mr bass i saw you did the survey is there anything you'd like to add um sure um uh, we uh, we put it through the development committee, uh, answered all the comments. Um, uh, one of the comments was uh, prior TDEC approval. I believe we have uh, satisfied that requirement uh, uh, with a signature proof uh, of TDEC approval before uh, before it got approved by the planning commission. And so we're uh, seeking approval tonight, uh, hoping to uh, to go ahead and move forward with this division. Thank you, Mr. Bass. Anybody else? If not, I will call the question and we will do a roll call vote. All right. Um, Mr. Comer. Yes. All right. Mr. Schwer. Yes. All right. Mr. Crabtree. Yes. All right. Um, Ms. Smith. Yes. All right, Mr. Uh, Mayor Noes. Yes. And Ms. Blackwell. Yes. All right, I will vote well, yes as well. So that is unanimous seven to nothing. All right, moving on. Next is the Markham Copperas Creek Minor Subdivision Plat. Um, public hearing, but uh, Ms. Moody, do you have anything you'd like to add before we open the public hearing? Um, this property is located in the northeast quadrant of the city at, near the intersection of Avoca Lake Road and Coppers Creek Road. Both are county roads and this property is in Tullahoma's Coffee County urban growth boundary. Uh, he's proposing four residential lots about 0.8 acres in size again 35,000 square feet. Uh, and with, uh, that low low density residential zoning. For Coffee County. Thank you very much. All right. Once again, we're about to open a public hearing. Anybody that would like to speak, state your name, 
You have two minutes. If you are done your time, please speak up to begin with. And um, with that, I'm open to public hearing. With that, I will close the public hearing. So if I would, it could entertain a motion so we can have discussion amongst the board. Move to approve. Move to approve. All right, I think Ms. Black will beat you out just a little bit, Mr. Noah, so I'm gonna give you the second. Mm -hmm. All right, um, discussion amongst the group. Um, okay, <laughs> I'll bite on this. I, um, if this is, um, I'm not, I just wanted to, to bring it up because sometimes, usually when we have minor subdivisions, it's to subdivide to two. And, and I understand that um, this does act technically meet the requirement because under five lots would be considered a, a minor subdivision. But if I would call your attention to resubdivision re of land 1.9, 1 dash 1-9.2. Whenever a parcel of land is sub subdivided and the subdivision plat shows that one or more lots containing more than double the minimum required area for the zoning district, the planning commission may have reason to believe that any such lots might be resubdivided into smaller building sites in the future or if it's leading to a future um, subdivision. Just um, wanted to make sure because th these are our big lots and um, as many of you know, I was in um, land acquisition for a major builder in uh, the greater Davidson, Williamson metro areas. And so I just wanted to, you know, bring your attention to the fact that one acre is 43,560 square feet, 3.2 acres put you just under the threshold. That puts you at about seven lots. So just is this... Um, is this the st uh, start of something or is this, um, is, th is that just what it is? Um, just anytime that something comes just right at that threshold, I just want, want to make sure, I guess, because it's, it's always. Um, what I know about the project, I think also Tim Daniels, um, the developer constructor may be on the phone, but what the, what the owner has shared with me is that, um, this is a, a subdivision from a larger, uh, and I provided a map of this, the, the parent tracks is nearly three acres. And, um, this initial, these initial four lots are meant to stand alone and remain in the county. Um, but we are considering and working towards a plan of services for an annexation request for an adjacent 12 and a half acres that the owner's proposing to develop and have annexed into the city so that it can be developed with approximately uh, 40 homes on city sewer. So these four lots are allowing them to get started with construction, but they're intending for those to be standalone lots that are served off of Coppers Creek Road and remain in the county served with septic systems. Mm -hmm. the, the 12 and a half acres immediately to the west will be served off of Avoca Lake Road. And as part of the annexation petition, we're looking at annexation of that portion of Avoca Lake Road coming into the city with the 12 and a half. So okay. that be at a future uh, planning commission because as I said we're having to work on an interlocal agreement with Coffee County and also the departments are putting together the plan of services and considering that right now right okay which is exactly how I would have done it <laughs> so I, I just um, I'll can you the part of 1-9.2 the planning commission may require that the subdivision and development of such parcel of land allow for the future opening of public ways and ultimate extension of adjacent public ways is what you're saying that you're working on. I don't know if that's what I'm saying. I'm not looking at this as a phase one of a future development. I'm really just looking at it as the four lots standing alone. Question. Approving this, would this preclude uh, this becoming a part of the city if the rest of the lots were annexed? Um, 
Um, I do know that annexation at this time has to be done at the owner's request. And I don't anticipate the owner requesting annexation. Isn't it true that the that for them to become a part of the city, they have to have our services and facilities such as sewer and water and everything before they could do that? Uh, no, not exactly. The plan of services allows each of the departments to outline what services they'll be able to provide and a timeline for when they will be provided. I think with this specific 12 and a half acres, the developer intends to extend services to make them available. And have they cleared the, um, the requirements for four septic tank that it perks and all that sort of stuff? Yes, I believe so. Does TUA currently service, uh, provide water to the conti um, contiguous lots? Yes. It's Duck River Electric and TUA water service. And this did get the required TDEC signatures? Believe it does. That has been a very contentious issue of late. So, yes, I believe so. To, to Shelly's concern uh, about the subdividing, um, it almost, it seems fairly consistent with the four lots to the north of it. Um, maybe even a little bit smaller than those four lots to the north of it. Um, so as, I mean, well, yeah, maybe, but it's, 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 it's it may be a stretch to say that there's going to be, that we're, that we're, that they're chipping away at a larger development. Okay. I'm sorry. I, I just checked. I do, um, on my desk, I have the signed. Um, TDEC signed plat for Coppers Creek for these four lots. Thank you. All right. Any other questions, discussion? All right. With that, I will call the question and we will roll call vote. Uh, Mr. Schwer. Approve. Yes. Ms. Smith. Approved. Mr. Crabtree. Yes. Mayor Nois. Yes. Mr. Comer. All right. He's say, waving yes. I'll take that. And Ms. Blackwell. Yes. And I am a yes as well. That would be seven in favor. All right. Next would be um, Anderson, the old Manchester Highway minor subdivision plat. Miss um, Moody. Okay. This one is in, and many of these are tonight, so you'll hear this. This is in our uh, urban growth boundary again. It's at 4212 Old Manchester Highway, located east of the city. Um, in an area right between the new Manchester Highway and the old Manchester Highway. Um, the applicants indicated that they'd like to subdivide and create two residential lots for single family dwellings. The proposed lots are very close to 1.4 acres each in size. And, uh, and again, um, my understanding is that Alan Charbonneau signed off on a version of this plat and then caught an error where the numbers of lot one and lot two were reversed. So now we're just waiting for him to sign the a corrected version of the plat. All right. With this, um, it's a public hearing as well. So 
I will open it up for public hearing. If you have anything to um, say, state your name and address. If you're going to volunteer your um, donate your time, please just uh, do that in the beginning. With that, I open the public hearing. Any comments from the public on the Anderson O Manchester Highway subdivision? All right, nothing. So I will move to entertain a motion to open discussion. Move to approve. All right. All right. Mr. Crabtree has uh, made the motion and Mayor Noah has seconded. All right. Any discussion amongst the commission? Since no discussion, I will go ahead and call the question. Um, so, um, let's begin. Mr. Schwer. Yes. Mr. Crabtree. Yes. Ms. Blackwell. Yes. Smith. Yes. Mr. Comer. Yes. Mayor Noes. Yes. I will be a yes as well. All right. On to the next <laughs> piece of business as well. This is going to be the Unity uh, Rutledge Falls Minor Subdivision Plat. Miss Moody. Okay. Also in our Coffee County Urban Growth Boundary <laughs> um, at 21 Rutledge Falls Road, east of the city, on the west side of Old Manchester Highway right where it intersects with Concord Road and Rutledge Falls Road. Um, this, this applicant is proposing subdivision to create three residential lots for single family dwellings. Each lot is generally 0.8 acres. Um, and again, has met the TDEC has signed off on the, the septic systems for these lots. Okay. Thank you, Ms. Moody. All right. Once again, public hearing, state your name and address, two minutes. If you're going to donate your time, please uh, let me know in the beginning. All right, I am opening the public hearing for the uh, Unity Properties, Rutledge Falls Road. Anyone like to speak? All right, I will close the public hearing. I will entertain a motion. It is approved. All right. I will give this one to uh, Mayor Noas and second to Miss Blackwell. All right. Any discussion amongst the group? Um, uh, yes, this is Bill Comer. Uh, this intersection is uh, has a lot in common with the in intersection on Riley Creek Road and uh, uh, and Avoca Road we've talked about so much. It mm -hmm. has the same angle coming in, maybe even worse. It's very dangerous intersection, and the city engineer has made a a, a statement that the driveway should be uh, on the north side of that first lot there, lot number three, I believe it is. And uh, what I'm wondering if there's any way that we can approve this with the stipulation that that driveway be on that side, because I think it would really add to the danger to have cars coming in and out right there in that uh, Y-shaped intersection. If, if I may uh, speak up here, uh, Mr. Comer, this is Nicholas Northcutt. I'm the surveyor who did this property. And we did go ahead and at the request of the engineer, we did include a note on the plat to that effect that says that that first lot down there, uh, the driveway does need to be on the northerly side of that lot as to allow as much space as possible between the intersection and that driveway. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. By um, by subdividing this, we're leaving seven point five acres to the uh, to the west um, landlocked. 
Um, is there a easement plan or what's the future plan for that? There are actually two access strips. If you'll notice on the north and the south of lot one and, and lot three respectively, there's a 50 foot strip that would access. Um, so no, nothing's okay. being landlocked. I got you, thank you. Mm -hmm. Any other questions from the commission? All right, if not, I will call the question and we will look for the approval. Um, Mr. Schwer. Uh, yes. Right. Mr. Comer. Yes. All right. Ms. Blackwell. Yes. All right. Ms. Smith. Yes. Mr. Crabtree. Yes. And I think yes for me. So that would be, I think I got everybody unanimous seven to zero motion passes. All right. We go for another Rutledge Falls. And this would be the Swan Rutledge, Rutledge Falls Road, uh, minor subdivision plat. Um, Ms. Moody? Yes, this one is at the south corner of Greenwood Road and Rutledge Falls Road in the Coffee County Urban Growth Boundary. Um, it is, from, from what I could observe, it's an undeveloped wooded lot and the applicants proposing to create three residential lots for single family dwellings that would all front Rutledge Falls Road. Uh, each lot is proposed at one, one and a half acres. And um, I just received the signed plat today from TDEC and otherwise meets all of the requirements. Okay. Thank you, Ms. Moody. All right. Once again, this is a public hearing. So I will open it up, um, state your name, your address, and you have two minutes. If you are donating, please um, mention at the beginning. Uh, with that, I open the public hearing on the Swan Rutledge Falls Road minor sub subdivision plat. All right, I will close the public hearing and entertain a motion. Move to approve. All right. Second. Second. All right, I think uh, <laughs> we had Mr. N uh, Mayor Nois and I think Rupa beat you in there, Mr. Crabtree. So, all right, any um, discussion amongst the Planning Commission? All right, if lack of there, I will go ahead and call the question. And we were looking for the approval of um, the Swan Rutledge Falls Minor Subdivision Plat. Um, Mayor Nois. Yes. Mr. Crabtree. Yes. Ms. Blackwell. Yes. Mr. Schwer. Yes. Mr. Comer. Yes. Ms. Smith. Yes. And I will be a yes. That will be seven zero. Motion passes. All right. Now we are to site plans. All right. These are still public hearings, though. But um, maybe would you please introduce the curl? Airport yes, yeah, so this will be on the site uh, on the Tullahoma Airport property. Um, some of you may be familiar with where the Vanderbilt Life Flight Center is now. It'll be located directly behind that. Um, it's proposed at 8,000 square feet and um, will be addressed as, I believe, 312 North Taxiway Lane. Uh, they're complying with all the height restrictions and um, all other requirements. We, they did propose, because they're building between two existing hangars, there will be 10 feet of separation on either side, and they have agreed to two-hour fire-rated walls for all exterior walls. Okay. All right. Thank you, Ms. Moody. This is a public hearing, so I will open the public hearing for the Carl Airport um, hangar site. Um, state your name, your address, two minutes. If you're donating, please mention it at the beginning. With that, um, I'm opening the public hearing. 
So just um, Stacy Roach, I work for Curl Construction, so I'm here to answer any questions that you guys may have. All right. Thank you, Stacy. Anybody else? All right. With that, I will close the public hearing and I will entertain a motion. Move to approve. All right. Second. All right, we have Mr. Crabtree with the motion and Ms. Blackwell with the second. All right, any discussion within the commission? All right. I will take that as we're ready to move to the call of the question. Um, I will do a roll call vote. Mr. Crabtree. Yes. All right, Mr. Schwerer. Yes. Mayor Nois? Yes. Mr. Comer? Yes. Ms. Smith? Yes. Ms. Blackwell? Yes. All right. All right, and I am a yes. I did get everybody, correct? All right, so seven passes. All right, moving to the... Uh, Last item on our agenda, this is going to be the Heart and Lot 2 Star Physical Therapy Site Plan. Ms. Moody? Um, this project is, you, you'll remember, I believe it was last month, we approved the subdivision plat that created the three commercial lots at the corner of Lakeway Place and Cedar Lane. This is a site plan for Lot 2 of that subdivision plat. And um, the applicant's proposing a new 3,200 square foot uh, office building, medical office building, and uh, all of the, the use is consistent with zoning. You'll see there were several uh, comments from the city engineer that were requesting be addressed. And one of them that I did not have time to talk, I believe Mr. Headley, the architect's uh, available on the Zoom meeting with us. I didn't have time to talk with him today, but one of the items um, that, that came up from staff was that uh, we had thought that the driveway would be centered on the property line between lot one and lot two to minimize the number of driveways um, and their proximity to one another. And I believe on this proposed site plan, there's, it isn't shown that way. Um, so I thought if Mr. Headley could maybe speak to that, uh, we'd like to hear more about whether he it does intend to make that revision or if there's been some other conversation of why we won't have that revision. Uh, this is Jerome Headley. Uh, mm -hmm. Regarding your um, comment about the shared uh, driveway, as I... I was unaware of that until last week. I have, um, I went back and did a study on how to do it. Uh, I've, uh, we can make it work. Uh, I've contacted and my client is aware of it. I've talked to him, he says uh, he has no problem with it, but there's some legalities because of the various property owners involved. They have to work out uh, a uh, a legal document on it, uh, so I I'll, I can have all the I'll have the uh, site plan uh, updated along with the uh, grading and drainage plans that were submitted to uh, Scott for him to look at from our uh, from my civil engineers, and we can get that uh, as soon as I can have their work I can forward on another copy of the civil drawings for um, uh, Scott to look at and comment on. But we will work on that and uh, I'll be in contact with my client tomorrow about the outcome in this meeting so that they can work on the, the legal document. Okay, thank you for that. And then I would just ask that the Planning Commission make their approval subject to these comments being addressed. And so the, that item is included in the comments. Okay. Thank you, Ms. Moody. All right, this is a public hearing. Um, 
So I will open the public hearing for the Heart and Lot 2 Star Physical Therapy Site Plan. State your name. You have two minutes and your state your address. If you're going to donate your time, please um, say it at the beginning. So I'm going to open the public hearing. All right. I will close the public hearing and I will entertain a motion so to open discussion. Move to approve. All right. I have a motion for Ms. Smith. Do we have to sure. make a motion though with the with what Mrs. Moody said? Um that's a good question. I would say yes, we would probably need to make the motion stating the um recommendation to that. Um you Ms. Would say move for approval subject to staff's comments being addressed. And the staff comments are in the staff report. So. Move to approve subject to the staff recommendations that the site plan meet all the development standards required by the Tomahawk Zoom Ordinance, landscaping maximum lot coverage and the minimum setbacks. What else did I miss? Or do I just have to say subject to staff's recommendations? I would say subject to staff recommendations. There you go. All right. We have a motion. Do I have a second? Third. All right, Mayor Noah seconds that. All right, um, open for discussion. Any questions? Any discussion amongst? Mr. Chairman, my understanding of what Mr. Headley said was that he was going to take this back to the people who are the investors and owners in this property and stuff. And we really don't have a full agreement that they're going to do what we're asking right now. So my question is, should we hold off on approving anything until we finalize that last little bit to make it much easier on us? This is Jerome Headley again. Uh, it's just a matter of getting a legal doc, getting there. There are several parties involved. And a legal document needs to be drawn up about this. And uh, my client's attorney can be working on it tomorrow very easily. So I can have, we can uh, have that as part of the documentation for, this, for the uh, STARS Physical ther Therapy Building. Right. My understanding is that it's just transactional at this point. Is that correct? Uh, say that again. Uh, my understanding is that it, at this point it would just be transactional, as you said. It's just a, a transactional. Um, um, you just need to get the, the document signed, and that, yes, that it's not. Just, yeah, it's just a transaction. Yeah, it, that's that's my understanding because they just uh, a couple things. One thing that came up initially, apparently they were unaware of the easements. The uh, 20 foot easement in an east west direction on the south property line of the stars lot. And then the on the um, east property line, Cedar Lane, there is a private 10 foot easement. And that easement is to allow for uh, the when lot one is developed, that they can bring their sewer down and tap into the uh, sewer that's going across the south property line. Right. So it, they had a concept initially that I was, I, I've seen it, but I was not part of it. But then when these easements surfaced, that changed the way how things were going to need to be done. So it's, it's more or less just amending the description of the property in the, the real the estate agreement contract. Between the various right. property owners, yeah. The contracts, yes, the real estate contracts. So it's just going to fix that description. Right. Yes. That's my understanding. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Headley. Yeah. Any other discussion amongst the commission? All right. With that, I will call the question. Um, move. Uh, motion is for the approval, um, including the um, comments from the um, staff notes. With that, um, Mayor Noas. Approve. 
Okay. Um, Mr. Crabtree? Yes. Ms. Smith? Yes. Mm -hmm. Mr. Schwer? Yes. All right. Mr. Comer? Yes. Ms. Blackwell? Yes. And I'm a yes as well. That would be seven. Motion passes. Ms. Moody, do we have any other new business? No, we don't. All right. Um, next meeting will be Monday, December 21st, uh, 2020. We'll be Zoom again. And I do believe I'll still follow in the statue. Um, do we have to vote to close? I forget. If, if we are done, if there's no further business, if there's no further business, you can adjourn the meeting without a vote. All right, then let's just adjourn this meeting and everybody have a great evening. <laughs>